watching this uh, after the live video is finished you're gonna have to wait but it's been working well so far so we're gonna stick with the same hi everyone happy Monday it's Monday it's Monday the Sun is out it's Monday it's no makeup Monday in this house it's not a thing I've just made it a thing because I couldn't be bothered to put makeup on so it's no makeup Monday I've made it a thing Take off your makeup, take off your bra, there's no need to worry about it because you're at your house, you're staying at home. Right, we're going to hang on a sec, I'm going to wait for my laptop to catch up so that I can see your comments. We're making Rocky Road slash Biscuit Cake today. Now the reason why I've given it two titles is because it's kind of a hybrid recipe. Um, Rocky Road essentially doesn't have any condensed milk in it normally just has the marshmallows and it has golden syrup in so this is more of a biscuit cake recipe or a fridge cake i've heard it called as well which the americans seem to think is um prince um, of wales's favorite dessert i don't know where they got that but i'm pretty sure old charlie isn't there munching this on his afternoons is it right here we are um, video is up and running let's get that muted so we can see what's going down hope everyone's well feeling fabulous on this bright and sunny monday morning we are making rocky road slash biscuit cake it's essentially the same thing um few slight differences i'm not actually using marshmallows because i couldn't get any marshmallows so i have just raided my biscuit tin i've got um some oreo cookies i've got some club bars and some whatever these are caramel wackos and we are just going to use whatever biscuits you have lying around the house your favorite biscuits i do have my all-time favorites the ice rings I might throw a few of them in uh, this is great for using up any leftover bits of chocolate what works really well is anything with a bit of crunch so maltesers crunchies any chocolate that you like you can put in this recipe so if you have anything lying around the house that you want to use up and you think i don't know what to put in this whack it in it's going to taste good as long as it's kind of biscuity or chocolate based you're fine also we are using digestive biscuits and rich tea biscuits there are lots of different recipes for this some of them use only rich tea biscuits um but i like to use a bit of both and also you can use pretty much any plain biscuit you want for the base of this you can use you can use shortbread if you wanted to um it's mostly just to give it a nice crunchy texture we're going to have some mushed up in there and some bigger chunks so you can decide what you want to do really adapt it how you like right now the one thing i do want to say is from now on for recipes going ahead i'm going to try my hardest to help you guys find the ingredients you need i don't know whether anyone all of you saw the post that i put on yesterday about trying not to go to shops i tend to have a bit of a strange view about it because I don't like to judge people. I am the last person who should be telling you what you should be doing. You know, I just do what I think is right and what I think is good and what I've been told to do by the government. Stay at home, keep your distance from people. If you have to go out, make sure you're only doing a couple of trips, one trip to the shops a week. You know, deal with what you have in the house, get a few extra things so that you don't have to go out so often, substitute for things um, and, and try and stay safe because we really need to try and all do this together. Lots of people might be interpreting the advice differently and, you know, we can't help what they're doing. Try not to put negative things out there. Try not to get down on people and tell people off things like that because it's really not helping anyone look look after yourselves do what you think is right make sure that you're keeping yourself safe your family safe stay at home bake with me and everything will be fine so that's my rant over and done with yes we're going to carry on and we are going to try and substitute things as much as we possibly possibly can to help stop you guys from having to go around to any multiple shops or worrying about not having ingredients so if you ever don't have anything and you're worried about what to substitute it with send me a message put a post on the group i'll help you with any substitutions that i know know of or skip that bake do a different bake and wait until the following week when you've got time to go out and get the rest uh, the ingredients in your weekly shop um, because all the videos will be on the group anyway so let's get started right 
Rocky Road Biscuit Cake. For those who have just joined in, it's No Makeup Monday. Fresh face, feeling fine, la la la. Now, this is a no-bake recipe, so we don't need to put our ovens on, but we do need to line a tin. You can use anything you've got, round cake tins. You can even use an oven dish. If you, This is pretty much an oven dish. You can use a casserole dish. You can use anything you like. Just line whatever you have, whatever you're using with some foil. You can use baking paper as well. If you have baking paper, I find foil is just easier to squish into the corners. That's why I use foil. So, the first thing we are gonna do is we are gonna measure out half of our plain biscuits. So, whatever plain biscuits you are using, whether that's rich tea, digestives, whatever you're using, whatever you've got in the cupboards, something nice and plain, we are gonna measure out half of what we need. So, my recipe says 150 grams of each digestives and rich tea. I like to get a nice mix because digestive biscuits have a really nice flavor. Uh, and they add a little bit of a different flavour. It kind of becomes a bit like a tiffin, if anyone likes chocolate tiffins. Kind of gives it that more kind of malty flavour if you add some digestive biscuits to it. So, my recipe calls for 150 grams of each. So into this bowl, I'm going to put in 75 grams of each. So we want 75 grams of our digestive biscuits. only 75 going 75 grams of our digestive biscuits and 75 grams of our rich tea biscuits and these we are going to mush up into nothing so i'm going to be using the end of a rolling pin to mash my biscuits if you have sandwich bags at home there's a good way of doing this with sandwich bags put all your biscuits into a sandwich bag and use the back of a spoon and break them up like that. Basically, what we're looking for, woo, nearly lost that one, that one's very. What we're looking for is this to be completely crumbs. We don't want any big chunks, we want it to be complete crumbs. So, in here, I've got 150 grams of biscuits, but there's half digestive and half rich tea. Now, it's not essential that you get it exactly that ratio, what is essential though, is that you get your biscuits nice and mushed up. They need to be literally like breadcrumbs with not a single lump inside. If you've ever made a cheesecake base, that's what you're looking for. Really mushy, broken up biscuits. You can do this with your hands and just break them up with your hands, but it takes a little bit longer. This is a, woo, losing some biscuits. <laughs> a good way if you haven't got a sandwich bag but it's quite easy I don't have the sandwich bags trying to leave a bit plastic free ish so no plastic um, sandwich bags in my house but if you happen to have sandwich bags then pop your biscuits into the sandwich bag seal it up and then use either a rolling pin or the back of a big spoon to break up all of your biscuits as you can see I'm kind of doing a bit of a, like a, a pestle and mortar style thing with mine and I'm using the base of my rolling pin and just mushing all of my biscuits up in my lovely mixing bowl. Mush, 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 mush. Make sure they're all nice and broken up. Right, now just to recap, this is 150 grams, half of digestives, half of rich tea biscuits that we are mushing into nothing. <laughs> it's literally just gonna be just once we're finished with it. This is what's gonna to help to thicken our biscuit cake. As I say at the start, I was trying to research lots of different recipes for biscuit cake and for Rocky Rose. This is kind of a hybrid of the two. And loads of um, American recipes that I found called this Prince William's cake, or Prince, what's it called now? Prince of Wales cake, the Prince of Wales cake, because apparently it's the Prince of Wales' favourite cake. But, I mean, that seems unlikely. I'm not going to lie, it does seem unlikely. I wonder who used to talk, is talking about Prince William or Prince Charles? I think that's Charlie, but I could be wrong. 
I was loving the Queen's speech yesterday. It was really nice. For one thing, it was just nice to see her well. Right, now, once you've got all your biscuits mushed together, they should look something like that. Literally, no big chunks, like a biscuit dust. I'm trying my best not to throw all of this out of the bowl. Right, that's your mushed up biscuits done. Then we are going to, into the same bowl, we are going to break up, no in fact, let's use a different bowl. So we've got mushed up biscuits in one bowl, we're going to grab another bowl and I'm going to break up the rest of our plain biscuits. So that's, that will be another 75 grams each of your rich tea and your digestives and we're just going to weigh them out and then break them up but into bigger chunks. I can't believe that, there's one extra in there for that one. So this will be 150 grams of rich tea and digestives. And what we're going to do with these ones, instead of mushing them, we're just going to break them up into chunks. You can do this later on, but the best way to be a good baker is to be prepared. So, kids, if your hands are nice and washed, get in there. I have washed my hands already. Always wash my hands these days. Wash my hands every time I leave the house, every time I get in the house. It's actually made it become a really good little habit. I mean, I'm really hoping people wash their hands generally before this whole thing kicked off, but it's a nice habit to have. And moisturising your hands. My hands have been very well moisturised since all of this. Every time I wash them, I try to moisturise them as well. Nobody wants dry knuckles, no, do we? Right, breaking up all our bits of biscuit. So this is what we want. We want like bigger chunks for this one. We don't want them to vanish into nothingness. We want bigger chunks of our plain biscuits and these are going to stay quite solid. And now the other thing that we are going to add to this bowl is our wonderful other bits of chocolate and things. Now I put 150 grams but you can kind of judge this for yourself if you want to because all you're going to do is break these up into chunks. Now I've got a chopping board so I'm going to chop some of mine but you don't have to be careful with sharp knives get parents to chop up bigger biscuits if you need them chopped up. I'm going to chop up all of my biscuits that I've got into chunks, small chunks like this. Marshmallows, you do not have to chop up, obviously. You can just chuck in your marshmallows if you want to, because this is gonna be the filling of your Rocky Road. Now, if you wanna do an, a more authentic Rocky Road, then I put in more of your chocolate items and less of your plain biscuits. So take out some of your kind of digestive chunks and add more marshmallows and more Maltesers and more different things like that. I even seen them Rocky Road biscuits with like cherries in. Anyone ever done those? I'm not a, big, not a big fan of those kind of sugary cherries. So I never use them, but this is when you can put in absolutely everything you like. Anything you've got. I've got some club bars. They were on offer in Aldi, a good offer. Chop them up into chunks, stick them into this big bowl you should be kind of weighing out about 150 grams. But as I said, if you're trying to go for a bit of more traditional rocky road, then leave out some of your digestives and rich tea and put in more of your marshmallows and your chunks of biscuit. Because generally what we want to do is once we're all finished with our mix and we're adding our bits of chocolate in, we just want to make sure they're all well coated with the mixture. And we can kind of gauge that once we start adding them in. So I'm going to weigh out what I need to start with. Do you want it like crumbs? Yes, so your mushed up biscuits, you should have done half of your biscuits into like a crumb. These ones we're just doing in nice big chunks because these we want to we want to notice in there. We don't want these vanishing into the mix. These can be bigger, bigger chunks. Right. So I've measured out, that's just under 150 grams of my chocolate biscuits and bits of chocolatey things. But we can add more later on if we feel like that's not quite enough. So 
We've got our biscuit chunks that we're going to be putting in. You should have your marshmallows and things in there as well, if you're using marshmallows or Maltesers or crunchies or whatever you're using. You should have a nice bowl of biscuit crumb. This should be half, whoo, dusty, half of your digestives and half of your rich tea, if you're using the same as me. Now, we want a nice big pan. You want as big a one as you've got, because this is going to be quite a big mix. And we want to get right in there and stir it all up. So if you have a small pan, you're going to need to do this in probably two batches, because you won't be able to stir everything in otherwise. Right, make sure that's on my scales properly. Now, we are ready for the core mixture of our Rocky Road slash biscuit cake. We don't need our condensed milk just yet. We do need, however, our butter. So, into this pan, you want to put your butter and your dark chocolate. Get a little knife so I can cut my butter into chunks. Move all the wrappers out of the way. So you want 150 grams of butter. As usual, I'm going to try and chop it into chunks first. This way it just melts a bit quicker. And you don't have like one ginormous blob of butter waiting to melt in the pan while everything else is already melted. So, there we are. I've cut my butter into lines and then into chunks in the paper. And I'm just going to drop in 150 grams of butter chunks. 150 grams. And then into this, you are then going to also put 200 grams of dark chocolate. Now you can use milk chocolate for this. You have to be very careful with milk chocolate because it can burn easily and it can seize. So I'd have your temperature on your hob if you're using milk chocolate a little bit lower, just to make sure that butter can really blend in with your milk chocolate. But if you're using dark chocolate like me, we're gonna break it all into chunks. This is kind of a little trick. I break all mine into chunks while it's still in the wrapper almost into individual squares, you can feel along the lines and break it as you go like that. And this way, when I open the wrapper, I can just pour it all in in one go, and it's a bit less of a mess. Right, open the wrapper, just like this at the top, pour all my chunks of chocolate in. Okay, now, we've got 150 grams of butter, and 200 grams of dark chocolate in our pan and we're going to get that on the hob and start it melting. I'm going to put it on really low because I'm going to get my camera set up over here so that you can see what I'm doing. The other thing you will need to do with your tin of condensed milk is get it open so that it's ready to pour in when we need it. So I'm going to take a second and I'm going to open my tin of condensed milk. A couple of people did ask about substitutions for condensed milk. So, if you don't want to use condensed milk, you can substitute it for 100 grams of golden syrup and just use golden syrup. It works just as well and it's more like a kind of traditional Rocky Road recipe. Right, I've got my tin ready to go there now. Peel the lid back so that it's good and ready to pour in when I need it. Okay, now I'm going to bring you over so that you can see what's going on Woo, at the hob. Try not to break my little camera stand that I got. Fiver off eBay, bargain. Right, here we go then. See, marvellous. And hopefully it won't fall over. <laughs> if it does, you're going to get a really good view of right in the pan. So, I've got my pan on the hob. I've got my butter and my chocolate in there. And I'm just going to keep mixing it to make sure that butter doesn't burn on the bottom of the pan. Again, if you're using milk chocolate, really keep an eye on your milk chocolate and keep it moving. Because milk chocolate does not like be melted down with other things so you'll need to keep an eye on it and make sure that it's blending in with your butter well okay I'm gonna leave that for a sec and I'm gonna bring my condensed milk over here because once everything is melted we're gonna pour in our condensed milk so as I say if you don't have any condensed milk you can substitute it for a hundred grams 
of golden syrup. In fact, I might put a bit of golden syrup in this anyway, see how it changes the flavour. I've never used golden syrup in this re recipe before because the one that I always used to use doesn't call for it. It's as simple as that. But I'm adaptable. You know, we can change things. We can, we can adapt. We can do new things. And I'm going to try adding a little bit of golden syrup to this and see how the recipe goes. Right. I'm not getting many comments. I just went and checked on the comments. So I hope you're all doing okay. And it's not just my feed not showing us the comments. Okay, melting this away. Looking fabulous. It's a real easy recipe, this one. We don't need the oven. We don't need to worry about fancy proving times and things like we did with the hot cross buns. It's a great Monday afternoon recipe, <laughs> as Mondays are now. Mondays used to be a lot more stressful. Now, all I need to worry about is what ingredients I need to make all these wonderful things. And making sure I don't forget things when I go to the shop. See, this is my problem. I've really been trying to just go to the shop once a week. But I'm really forgetful. Even with a list, I manage to forget something. So I've been allowing myself a top-up pop. A pop to the top-up shop once a week. So I do my big shop on a Sunday or a Monday. My big weekly shop. And then I do a pop, a pop shop later on in the week. Only once for anything that I might have forgotten. And there's already things on that blinking list that I have forgotten. Okay, this is looking nice. You can whack the heat up since we're keeping an eye on it. We don't want it to burn. And we don't really want it to boil either. We don't want it to start bubbling. We just want to get it so that everything is melted down. And then we're going to put in our condensed milk. I'd love to know if this, this is actually a favourite of the Prince of Wales. It's actually, oh yeah, some of the uh, American recipes that I found were literally called it the Prince of Wales cake. It's very strange. Fridge cake is another one that's called. Fridge cake, biscuit cake, Rocky Road. The best Rocky Road does have marshmallows, but I couldn't find marshmallows. And as I say, I didn't want to start going to any of the shops, so I skipped the marshmallows this time and I'm just going to use whatever biscuits I've got lying around the house. I think I will be putting in some extra biscuits. I'm going to put in some of them um, party rings and see how they go in the mix. Okay, now, as you can see there, all of my chunks of butter and my chunks of chocolate are almost completely melted. Keep mixing it, making sure none of that burns on the bottom of the pan. Got a few tiny little lumps in there, so I'm just going to wait for them to break down. Make sure they're all lovely and melted. And then we are literally just going to pour our condensed milk straight in on top. Right, I'm all melted. Be very careful with the edges of your tins. This edge gets really, really sharp, so be careful. Pouring in the condensed milk straight on top. You can keep the heat on the go because we do want the condensed milk to warm in there. We give the tin a bit of a scrape. Make sure we've got the whole tin in there. Not leaving any of that lovely condensed milk in there. I, do, I have heard of people drinking condensed milk, but it's so sweet. I cannot believe people would drink it out of the tin. Very, very sweet. This is why you can use golden syrup as a substitute. Right, so if you are using golden syrup, and all of your chocolate and butter is melted. You can add your golden syrup as well and mix that in. I'm going to add a bit of my golden syrup. I'm just literally going to blob a bit in, see what it does to the flavour. You don't have to do this, this is just me having a bit of a play with my recipe. Put a little spoon of, con of uh, golden syrup in there, see how that tastes. Why not? This is what baking is all about. You've got to adapt. How did people ever find these recipes? How did people ever figure out that they could add yeast to bread, to flour and water to make bread? They must have just tried it. They might, must have just tested it out, given it a whirl, see how it ended up. I think that about a lot of things. Like, who was the very first person to make biscuit cake? Who was the very first person to think, I'm going to mix chocolate and condensed milk and see how it goes? Oh, very interestingly as well, if anyone knows anything about Portuguese desserts, this apparently is a Portuguese dessert as well, called a, uh, I think it's called a, a pronounced a brigadeiro, brigadeiro, something like that. 
Um, and literally what they do is they boil up chocolate and butter, they pour in condensed milk and then keep it boiling until it's really thick. And then they, that's it. They leave it to cool and they just eat it with a spoon. I mean, you will see this mixture is the most delicious thing ever. So I can completely understand that. Right, now what we're looking for is for this just to warm through with the condensed milk in. You'll notice it getting a bit thicker. We don't want it to boil because we don't want it to dry out, but we do want it just to warm up. So I've probably had it in there. It's starting to get some little bubbles in. I've probably had it in there for about a minute now. So I'm going to turn my heat off. See how it's kind of leaving a bit of a trail when you put your spatula through? That's all you need really, just so it's nice and warm. It's all incorporated. Now I'm going to turn my heat off and we're going to go back over and add our biscuits. But we can do that back at the main table. Welcome back everyone. It's nice getting away from the hot, um, the hot hob for a second while I set my camera back up. Make sure that we're not all wonky. There we go. Right, now, save a little bit of a space. Move my chopping board out of the way. And I'm just going to put down a tea towel so that the hot pan doesn't damage the surface of the kitchen. <laughs> Parents, you'll be thankful of this. Kids, if you're using a hot pan, put a tea towel down first. And then your pan won't damage the side. Right, I'm going to bring this back a bit so you can see what I'm doing down there as well. Tilt us down. And then, so we've got our pan, a lovely mix here. The first thing that we're going to add is all of our crumbs. So pour in all of your biscuit crumbs. This is going to help it to thicken and set as well. So it's very important that you add all of the biscuit crumbs. Mix them all in until they're all completely incorporated into the chocolate. And then all you do is add all your chocolate bits. So I'm going to start off with the good stuff because I don't want it to be too dry. I'm going to put all in all the nice chocolatey bits of biscuit first. Chuck all them in, along with some of my chunks of digestives and rich tea biscuits. Oh, there's a little bit of Oreo there. I'll have that bit. And mix them all in. Do it a bit of time if you want. If you're using stuff that's uh, chocolate coated, make sure they all go in. All at the same time, give them a good mix. We don't want too much of the chocolate to come off the surface. There we go. Keep mixing. You want quite a heavy ratio of biscuit to chocolate coating. What I mean by that is, see how this is a lot of just chocolate on its own? We want loads and loads of biscuit chunks in there. So I'm going to put in, whoa, the rest of that bowl full of biscuity things. Three second rule, I'll eat that later. Mix it all up and I'm going to add some more. I definitely think this could take some more chunks of biscuit. I'm going to throw in some party rings, why not? Add some party rings in the cupboard. I can't believe I had party rings in the cupboard because normally they last about five seconds with me. You never get to look in when it comes to party rings. I eat them all. I could polish off that packet in about an hour <laughs> with a cup of tea. Pop in some party rings, just break them up into chunks. You can also add like your Easter chocolate as well. This is a great one if you've got like things from your Easter eggs that you don't necessarily want to eat on the run. Pop them into something like this. It kind of gets rid of them or puts them into a different a different recipe so that you can eat them or give them away even. If there's bits of your <laughs> Easter chocolate that you're not a big fan of, make them into a bit of a cake and give them away. Why not? Okay, break up the bits more biscuit, pop them in, throw in whatever you like. I'm wondering what else I can get in there. Like these club bars are mint club bars. A little bit of mint. Throw a bit of mint club bar in there. I'm going to break this up into a couple of chunks and pop that in there. And I think that will be enough for mine. I'm going to show you what it looks like so that you can see the kind of consistency that we're going for. See how it is like mostly chunks of biscuit just coated in that chocolate coating. That is exactly what you want. You should have your marshmallows in there, you should have your biscuits in there. 
your Maltesers, your Crunchy Bar, anything that you've had, all in there. And then that is pretty much done. All that is left to do is for us to pour it into our pan that should have been lined, white lined with some foil or some baking paper. All that is left to do is to pour this into our pan and flatten it down. Now, this is all going to blob out now, one big blob. Ready? Blob. <laughs> it's already starting to cool and kind of set into one big crazy blob. Move that out of the way so you can see. And we just want to press it as best as we can into all the edges. It's spread out so that it cools and sets quicker. I like using a thinner tin because it takes less time for the mixture to set, which means more time for me to eat it. Press it all in, spread it all out, right into the corners. Now you can throw a few more mal um, marshmallows on top of this if you're using marshmallows. You can put crumble up a crunchy and drop a crunchy on top, that'd be really nice. Little crunchy flakes. Oh, you all know, well, there are videos of how to uh, make your own honeycomb. So if you watched the honeycomb while we were making one of our recipes last week, then you will know how to make your own honeycomb. Why not whip up a batch of your own honeycomb to drop in there? I'm going to sprinkle a bit of Oreo cookie on top. Why not? Bit of Oreo on there. Give it a nice finish. Got my hands covered in Oreo. And we're done. That is it. That is all you need to do. You have just whipped up your own homemade Rocky Road. Now that just needs to go into the fridge. How are we doing? Can you say again what order you add it in? The crumbs go in first. So as long as you put all the crumbs in first, then you can put the bigger chunks in. That's all it is to it. Just put the dusty crumbs in first and then all of your big chunks. And then you're done. Ta-da! Pop it in the fridge, wait till it's nice and cold and all set, and then you can chop it up and eat it. I'm going to stick that in my fridge now, so it can start chilling. Don't want to waste any time, because I want to be eating it. Right then, how's everyone getting on? Any issues, any questions, any problems or anything? I'm going to refresh this to make sure that I haven't missed any comments, and we will see what we're, what we're doing. A bit oily around the edges. Don't panic, Ellen. Once you start adding those crumbly biscuits, it should soak up any oiliness that's left lying around. Um, are you are you doing okay, Ellen? Have you managed it? Crumb biscuits in first, then big chunky biscuits. Dun, 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 dun. How are we getting on? Let's make sure we haven't missed anything. Hi, Jean. Hi, Jean. Nice to see you. <gasps> I almost forgot, it's my sister-in-law's birthday today, Laura Bailey, happy birthday to you, are you ready? Um, Alexa, play happy birthday. Here's happy birthday by Kygo, featuring John Legend and um, Amazon Music. This is a fancy happy birthday. I was just looking for happy, Alexa stop. Happy birthday to you. Yeah, that's what I was hoping for, not some fancy song. A big happy birthday to Laura Bailey, my lovely sister-in-law. I hope you're well. I hope you're making it with the kids. You should be. She told me she was going to get loads of Maltesers in there, so she should have a lovely biscuit cake done by now. Right then. Thank you all for watching. I hope you've done well today. I hope it's all gone okay and there's been no issues. Keep putting comments on. I'm going to be uh, online for the next 20 minutes or so, checking on questions and making sure everyone is doing okay. And then I will see you tomorrow for carrot cake. Now I apologise, the carrot cake recipe has an error. I missed the oil off. So I'm going to delete all the carrot cake recipes off the group and put on a nice, fresh, new recipe with everything correct. The only thing that's missing is the oil. So if you're using the old recipe, don't panic. All you need is 155 grams of vegetable oil. You can use sunflower oil. You can even use coconut oil if you want to. You can use olive oil. Olive oil tends to have a bit of a strong flavor. So you're better off going for a vegetable, sunflower oil, coconut oil, something like that. But if all you've got is olive oil, 
use olive oil. There'll be many other things in there to disguise the flavour. So thank you for watching. I hope it's all gone well. Um, I've got, I shall be checking on things um, as we go along. And I will see you all tomorrow. Happy Monday, la la la.